Everybody's doing well today. I'll start by putting Laura on the spot to tell us whatever she'd like to tell us about Vacation Bible School. Um, it's going well. I still need some group leaders. If you feel your calling, I have um, 9 and 10 year olds and 11 12 year olds. Or if you want to be an assistant and help with another group, just let me know. And if anybody has any old Christmas trees that they want to get rid of or not use or I can borrow to use, it's a camping thing, so I've got tents and I want trees and stuff around. So. Just let me know, I can pick them up, or if you can just drop them off in the fellowship hall, that'd be great. So you're talking about use for the event, not keep? Right, right. Yep, just to use to decorate. Did, okay. you, did you get all the dinners covered? All the dinners are covered, yep. Um, most of the, I got most of the snack material, but if you want to donate items like for the trail mix and stuff, you can either let me know, or um, if you want to you know, make a donation, I can put it towards that. Right. Awesome. So we need two more group leaders, so Definitely. let Laura know if you would like to be a group leader. Uh, there's an announcement in the bulletin today, uh, a little bit in advance, that Nancy and Norman Tippins are renewing their vows on November the 10th. If you want to put that on your calendar, uh, we'll support them. Any other announcements? I would like to do a follow-up. Uh, she did not make the finals, but she had an awesome experience, and it was awesome for everybody. I mean, it was unreal watching all these Olympic swimmers swimming. So we can say that we've seen the Olympic swimmers in person. Fantastic. So she had a good experience. She turned 16 on the day she swam, so that was an extra added benefit. Fantastic. For those of you who weren't here earlier, Louise's granddaughter lives in Richmond. Uh, made it to the Olympic trials. She's looking forward to 2028. All right. Any other announcements? Let's begin our worship. All right. Now, friends, we join in all in prayer. Heavenly Father, we give thanks to you for your life giving breath every morning for us to breathe. We praise you for your many more blessings in our lives. And we thank you that your loving kindness and unending grace have led us here to worship you this very moment. Now, as we begin our worship of God, we ask with our prayer that your spirit guide us and you are pleased with our humble praise and humble prayer. Holy God, may your name only be glorified from the beginning to the end of our worship together. And your holy presence be revealed to us through your spirit of life. We pray together in the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs> We stand in the power of your 
two of them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Did you write all menu changes? That's good. Just to make What if you are near to a group of friends who are using that terrible words? Who are saying like very inappropriate things? What would you do? Tell them to stop. Yes, you can tell them to stop, right? But I know that TV. It could be TV, and if you're surrounded with your friends. Because I do sometimes hear of us when we are scared. Remember last week we were doing something and then someone said, and then we say, what's the alternate way we can say it? Instead of like, what the, uh, then we can say, wow, right? You use the something different words instead of using the, right, terrible words. You can constantly, you need to practice yourself and you can share it to your friends. So remember the what the Proverbs 4 23, the verse I said it? Above, above, above all else. Okay, let's do this. Above all else, repeat it after me. Above all else, above all else, guard your hearts. Guard your hearts. For everything you do, for everything you do, goes from it. So let's try our best. Now let's try our best to fill our hearts with a kind words, right? Let's try to put our, let's keep our hearts clean and pure. Because what we feel, our hearts will come out in our words and actions. And if you trouble, if you have trouble to say no to bad things, it's okay. You can always turn to the God and ask for help. You can always pray for the courage and wisdom. All right, so let's do this right now. Let us go to help us. Dear God, please help us guard our hearts against bad things and keep them clean. Let us remember that you have our backs. Thank you for loving us first. We love you in Jesus' name. We pray. Amen. Now I'd like for us to pray the prayer for the nation as we hear the word of God. Let us pray. Eternal God, you are straight and strong and close to the word of the Bible, and in the to hear your word fresh and change. Help us to rely always on your promises and spiritual. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <coughs> This morning our scripture reading is from 2 Samuel chapter 7 verses 1 through 9. When the king was settled in his palace, and the Lord had given him rest from all his surrounding enemies, the king said to the prophet Nathan, Look, I'm living in a cedar palace, for God's chest is housed in a tent. Nathan said to the king, Go ahead and do whatever you're thinking because the Lord is with you. But that very night, the Lord's word came to Nathan, Go to my servant David and tell him, This is what the Lord says, You are not the one to build the temple for me to live in. In fact, I haven't lived in a temple from the day I brought Israel out of Egypt until now. Instead, I have been traveling around in a tent and in dwelling. Throughout my traveling around with the Israelites, did I ever ask any of Israel's tribal leaders I appointed to shepherd my people? Why haven't you built me a cedar temple? So then say this to my servant David, this is what the Lord of heavenly forces says, I took you from the pasture, from following the flock, to the leader over my people Israel. I've been with you wherever you have gone. And I've, I have eliminated all your enemies before you. Now I will make your name great, like the name of the greatest people on earth. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Pray with me. God of hope, 
God of grace, to give thanks to you for your gospel of grace to save us through your Son Jesus Christ. For God, at this moment we are still empty and long to be filled. We are hungry and long to be fed. We are lost and long to be found. So we ask you to send your Holy Spirit for us, to open our ears to hear the truth, to humble ourselves, to follow your lead in your way. Make the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable to you and pleasing in your sight, O Lord, our Redeemer, of peace and joy. A church was going to baptize an old lady on the coming Sunday, and the elderly woman's daughter her, told her, Mom, a pastor asked, Why did Jesus die on the cross? Did you answer him? He died because of my sin. Do you understand? Then the mother nodded like she had understood it well. And finally, on the Sunday morning, the baptism ceremony began. Before the congregation, the pastor asked the mother the same question the daughter asked. Ma'am, I just want to ask you one of the most important questions as you get baptized. Why did Jesus die on the cross? And she answered without hesitation. Yes, because of the sins of my daughter. <laughs> this lady simply thought that when her daughter said Jesus died for my sins, it meant that Jesus died for her daughter's sins. Dear love, Jesus died for us, for you and for me. John 3.16 says, To God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Yes, Jesus died on the cross in order to save us from the power of sin and death. Do you really believe this? Isaiah 53 Verse 5 says, He was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him, and by his wounds we are healed. So I hope you'll be able to confirm the love of God again in today's message. When we look at the people of Israel, during the time of today's reading, they experienced a seven-year-long civil war after King Saul's death. So historically and biblically speaking, the southern part of the kingdom where the tribe of Judah was located was on the side of David. And the northern Israel was on the side of Saul's family, the first king of Israel. And they had to fight for their own survival. And in the end, David came out victorious in the long civil war against the South family. And finally, David became the king of the unified kingdom of Israel. Now, actually, David was anointed and blessed by the priest, prophet Samuel, in, the, in his early days as a boy. But at the same time, his life began to be persecuted by the king Saul. David had been on the run from Saul for about 10 years. And after the death of King Saul, David was anointed again as the king of the tribe of Judah. And he ruled Judah in Hebron for several years, and he was anointed for the third time to be the king over all Israel. And by the way, do you know how long it took for God's promise to come true? It took about 20 years for the United Kingdom of Israel to be established, that is, for God's promise to be fully realized. David, the shepherd boy of Bethlehem, did not come out victorious against Goliath and did not become king of Israel overnight. He was disciplined again and again and again and, and then learned to live a life of faith a life of patience, and a life of obedience to God. In our scripture reading this morning, after the king David was settled in his 
palace, and the Lord had given him rest from all his surrounding enemies. Actually, before the Lord struck down all the enemies around him and made him the king who lived in peace in the palace, David had to fight for decades on the battlefield and had to live a long time in the face of death. David then eventually found peace. In other words, he was allowed to rest with peace by God. And there are moments in our lives that are full of pain, hurt, suffering, and fear. And, but these times are sure to pass. It will pass somehow whether you pass it with faith or pass it without faith. What is important, however, is that when we answer with faith, God adds God's precious, precious blessings. And with this context, the first point I want to share with you this morning is that when God gives us rest, and allows us to live with peace. We must look to God instead of gazing at the world. In other words, we must take time to reflect on our relationship with God. When David found rest after the long battles, he looked back at his relationship with God. In verse 2, he said to the prophet Nathan, Here I am living in a palace of Siva, while the ark or chest of God remains in a tent. Then one day while King David was living in a beautiful palace in the grace of God, he had a heavy heart that he could not endure. At the time, Siva was the best material from which to build palaces. He was living in a gorgeous palace but the dwelling of God's presence was just sitting in a shepherd tent. So David felt so sorry for God, and he felt he needs to build a temple of God that would be much bigger and much better than his royal palace. I believe this was because David loved God so much, right? And his desire to build a temple for God was from a poor and beautiful Part of faith. However, God did not allow him to build the temple for two reasons. The one was, one was that God considered the traveling tent to be sufficient as a symbol of God's presence. This is what we read in the Bible today. If God wanted a temple, God would have commanded people to build the temple. Just like when the people built the Ark of Noah and the tabernacle in the wilderness. But it had been over 400 years since the people of Israel settled in the land of Canaan. So God probably had a plan that they would eventually build the temple. And another reason God even allowed David to build the temple was written in 1 Chronicles. As David says in, the, in his confession, it is written in 1 Chronicles chapter 22, verse 8, But the Lord told me, David, you have shed much blood and waged great wars. You won't build the temple of my name because you have spilled so much blood to the ground before me. And yet, we need to understand and keep in mind that Although God did not agree with David's plan for building the temple, God was gladly pleased with his long, loving, and faithful heart. The first of mankind to build a temple for God, even before God commanded him. So God blessed him even more as he read. And from that day on, David began to prepare the necessary funds and materials for his son Solomon to build a temple on his behalf. I think usually when there is rest and peace, people turn their eyes to the word, they look for things to enjoy in the word, and want to show off their achievements, don't they? And this is natural. However, David was different. 
It is important for him to think about and to turn his eyes on his relationship with God again. Of course, there were many difficulties for him, but God blessed him in many ways. Often we see what we lack first. But David was a man who could see how great the grace he received from God. But likewise, whenever we come before God and find true rest, I pray we may look towards God, just like David did. And this is what blessed life is for us as believers. A second point of today's message is this. I want us to keep our eyes on the love of God that leads from the tabernacle to the temple and to the cross. In verse 6, God says this, In fact, I haven't lived in a temple from the day I brought Israel out of Egypt until now. Instead, I have been traveling around in a tent and in a dwelling. As reading and reflecting of this verse, it brought me back to the Garden of Eden. God walked in the tent and in the tabernacle as God walked in the garden with Adam and Eve. For God ordered the tent, the tabernacle looked shabby and not much beautiful to people's eyes. It was a place where God was dwelling with his people. And it was a place where God walking, walking with his people. According to the Old Testament, the tabernacle, the worship place for God, was a portable dwelling place of God, as you know. And the tabernacle is called Mishkan in Hebrew language, a word from the verb Shechan, meaning to dwell, to live, which symbolizes God's presence. And the tabernacle teaches us that God made a great sacrifice on our behalf in order to do all, to live with us. And according to the Bible, then the tabernacle, the sanctuary is divided into the holy place and the most holy place, or the holy of holies. Here, the holy, the most holy. The people of Israel called the inside of this temple sanctuary, this whole part, called sanctuary. Sanctuary means holy place, but in the sanctuary there is a special place which is divided by the curtain. It's the holy of holies or the most holy, where only the high priest could enter once a year. According to the Jewish tradition, the holy of holies was covered with a very thick curtain to prevent anyone from approaching it. The curtain as eight to nine inches thick cloth, sixty feet high and twenty feet wide, that you may wonder why the curtain was so big and heavy. It meant that the war of sin between God and humankind was huge and heavy. It meant the sinners didn't have easy access to the presence of the Holy, Holy God. But if you read Matthew's Gospel, chapter 27, verse 51, where when Jesus was crucified, the curtain was torn in two from top to bottom. The important importance of this is that after Jesus' crucifixion, the first thing that God had done was to split, to remove the curtain of the Holy of Holies. And as a result, the place, the Holy of Holies, that was hidden for sinners for thousands of years had been revealed to everyone. And therefore, from that on, anyone can come closer to the holy place of God, to be in the presence of God. And Hebrews 9, chapter 9, verse 12 explains the significance of this. He entered the holy of holies once for all by his own blood not by the blood, blood of goats or cats, securing our deliverance for all time. That is, Jesus' crucifixion representing that one sacrifice would replace the numerous sacrifices 
days to come for all eternity. The curtain was like a blocking wall between God and sinful mankind. However, now it is gone because of the power of the cross of our Lord. When you look at the relationship between God and people in the Bible, people always spoke the relationship first and ran away from God because of their sins. But God came down from heaven to the earth through His Son, Christ. And I think, I believe this has a very important implication for our faith. We say that we should come to God and live a life following God, but it that means that before we draw near to God, God comes to us first. God comes to us first. We say we have the courage to grab the Lord's hand, but what good is it that if that we have courage if the Lord has not already come before us. We boast that we have had a great deal of heart and opened the door to the Lord. For what good would it be that the Lord had not been waiting at the door? Through the meaning of the tabernacle and the temple, I hope that you and I are once again thankful for the love of Jesus through the cross. We often think that there is a reason why God blesses us and loves us. We think that there is something that God wants us to do for God. But friends, do parents raise their children for the future we come? Do they consider whether it is worth investing their time and money in their children? Parents' hearts for their children are not like that to begin with. In today's future, God said to David, this in verse 7, Throughout my traveling around with the Israelites, did I ever ask any of Israel's tribal leaders I pointed to shepherd my people, why haven't you built me a cedar temple? Dear beloved sisters and brothers in Christ, I pray that you may come to God in your life, even when you are living in peace, and with many blessings. And don't forget the mercy of God, the great love of Jesus Christ and the cross in our hearts as we continue on living our God-given lives. God wants us to have a healthy and lasting relationship with Himself first, and then we can build a community of faith that is healthier and stronger in our relationship with God ever before in the presence of God. So I bless you and pray for you that you may find rest and peace in Him this coming week in the days to come. At the same time, I really want all of us to be mindful that we find rest in our lives. We should remember God once to have a deeper and continual relationship with the Lord. Amen. Amen. My friends, our centering hymn is hymn number four or five. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Would you stand with your Bible? Hymn number four or five.
friends, I buy you a kind of giving. Bring your gifts and your talents, bring your sacrifice of praise to the Lord. Bring them in prayers and shouts of thanksgiving to celebrate God's faithfulness and His saving grace for us. Grace. Our homes, work 
places in our relationships. Wherever we go, be with us. And continue to lead us, protect us, and work in us and through us. So we may encounter your presence every day and everywhere. And we proclaim every day we die for you and we live for you through your power of grace. Our friends, let us center ourselves and take steps toward our gracious God and seeking for his comforting peace and loving grace in silence. Merciful God, we ask all this in the name of the Son, Jesus Christ. My friends, let us continue to pray as our Lord Jesus taught us, but he was here on earth by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Friends, our closing hymn is hymn number 374, Standing on the Promises. Hymn number 374. We sing this hymn, verse 1. Two and four. We stand to join.
May we who have been found by the grace and overwhelming love of God now become those who sit with grace and joy. Let us go into the world with open eyes and longing hearts to love of God and to serve our neighbors. The peace of the Lord be with you all of you now and forever. Amen. Amen.